live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. As the reality of Tasmania securing its place in the AFL begins to sink in, the state government is facing pressure to release the agreement it's made with the AFL. Both the opposition and the Greens say taxpayers deserve to know what we are committing to. Signing off together, this agreement between the state government and the AFL was the final piece of the 19th licence puzzle. But 24 hours on, questions remain about what we've signed up for. This is a deal that absolutely should and must be seen by the people of Tasmania. Labor and the Greens warning the devil is in the detail. We have a right to know what is stitched up with Gil McLaughlin. The Premier needs to answer because we need to know what he has signed Tasmanians up to and what we're going to be on the hook for in decades to come. The Premier vowing to not hide the agreement once commercial and confidence issues are resolved. We'll be open and transparent uh, about the deal uh, that we've made. We've always been uh, open and transparent in terms of uh, the annual cost, the infrastructure required. Remaining confident $715 million is enough for Macquarie Point. Uh, we want to see uh, cranes in the sky, uh, <coughs> shovels in the ground as soon as possible. 100% Tasmanians can be sure the costs will blow out on this stadium. The future of North Melbourne and Hawthorne also on the table. Both are here until 2025, currently leaving a three-year gap between their deal ending and Tasmania's debut. The Ruse president says an exit strategy is being worked on, allowing them to plan what's next. Hawthorne's coach meanwhile wants Tasmania to stay in their nest. I think it would be a sad and a waste of 20 years of work in the community to, to throw it away and to step away completely from Tasmania. Sport Minister Nick Street says he's pleased Hawthorne wants to maintain a relationship and looks forward to having conversations with them and the AFL about content in Tasmania from 2026 onwards. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A first-term Tasmanian senator has won a housing boost negotiating with Federal Labor. Tammy Tyrrell doubling the state share of affordable homes in a new bill, but it's not a done deal just yet. A win for Tammy and for Tassie. In the last census data, 75% increase in homelessness in Tasmania. Jackie Lambie's Senate sidekick snatching an extra 600 affordable homes for Tasmania from Federal Labor's Future Housing Fund. It's only the floor. They can give us as many more houses as they like and we will accept them gratefully and with love. What we have done is get an agreement so that every state and territory gets their fair share. The bill now hangs on further crossbench support in the Senate. Four and a half thousand Tasmanians are on the housing wait list. The state government is playing catch up on its 10,000 homes in 10 years goal, building just over 300 in the first year. We are doing everything we can uh, within our power and I thank uh, Homes Tasmania and all our partners, the community housing providers, for what they do. These 15 units in Rokeby will be offered to older men. They're nearing a move-in date. Some of the accommodation here have uh, ability for carers to be on site 24-7 uh, to support and provide those wraparound services. So there are many older Tasmanians who have been doing it tough and uh, this will provide a roof over someone's head. Many more roofs and many more heads to go. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The Attorney-General has intervened to ensure a coronial inquest into the death of Jari Wise proceeds, overruling a Supreme Court judge. The 26-year-old father was killed in 2020 after being hit by a car driven by his former partner, Melissa Oates. She spent eight months behind bars. This morning, Justice Michael Brett told a Supreme Court hearing he wasn't satisfied an inquest was necessary, a blow for the family of Mr Wise. I feel like... When the DPP looked over the full brief, they didn't look properly. They weren't guided properly. They missed out on certain little intricate bits. It was so important. Just hours later, Attorney General Elise Archer announced her extraordinary move, claiming an inquest will help Mr Wise's loved ones find answers. Concerns have been raised about consultation for UTAS's city move by Legislative Council members today as public hearings into the University and its Act continued. A staff survey which found 16% approval for the move was uncovered. Vice-Chancellor Professor Rufus Black argued a larger survey conducted at the same time gave a much kinder result. 
In that, we did look at Sandy Bay versus City. Those staff who were in the city had a stronger view of, that the city was a good idea. Those in Sandy Bay somewhat were, were, were you know, on the whole, oriented slightly towards the other end. The committee also poured over the university's finances. Meanwhile, two-thirds of Tasmanians say they're worse off financially now than a year ago. There is building pressure on renters, with 90% finding the increasing grocery bill is their most concerning spend, according to 3P Advisory's quarterly cost of living report. It's really concerning to see in the report that two-thirds of Tasmanians now are saying that they don't think they could raise $2,000 in a week's time for something urgent, which really demonstrates that people are living week to week. The survey was taken before this week's surprise RBA rate rise. Well, the search for a missing teenager has entered a fourth day. The Westpac helicopter search Launceston's Henry Street a short time ago, where Cheyenne Lee Tatnell was last seen on Sunday night. The 14-year-old was sighted around the North Esk River around half past eight. Tasmania Police is calling on Cheyenne or anyone with information to come forward or contact Crime Stoppers. Information can be provided anonymously. An 11-year-old Tasmanian boy who was bitten by a shark while on holiday in Western Australia is recovering from further surgery. Archie Blake's wounds have been treated, but he's still facing a long stint in hospital on antibiotics to avoid infection. A GoFundMe has raised nearly $20,000. The gates have opened for Tasmania's premier agricultural event, with more than 12,000 making the most of the Agfest sunshine on day one. In its 41st year, patrons pulling on the boots at Quercus Park for three days of livestock, machinery and good old-fashioned country fair. Back in May, where it belongs, Agfest making its grand return, with crowds pouring in early to make the most of the day, many travelling the extra country mile to see what all the hype is about. We've come from Victoria and uh, we'd heard about Agfest before. It is so big and it is so well organised. From craft to four-wheel drive displays, Agfest offering something for everyone. Lots of <laughs> cars and tractors, that's our favourite. Probably the four-wheel driving or total tool, so that's pretty good. The event an opportunity to master together, keeping traditions alive and passing down Tasmanian pastimes. Organisations hoping to inspire the next generation. We're an older group of people. We need to attract younger people. We've got the knowledge to do it and we'll help you do it. And between the fun and festivities, it's three days of business. Quirkus Park turning into the ultimate sale yard. Farmers and enthusiasts able to speak directly to suppliers and celebrate their contributions to our state. Farmers are the lifeblood um, of Tasmania and we're so fortunate to have such amazing, innovative farmers. It's the people that you can talk to, they are farming people and then you'll find the people that haven't got any idea of farming at all that still loves to know where our heritage has come from. Over the next couple of days, patrons will have the opportunity to get up close and personal to a couple of animals. Might even meet this guy. Two more days of action awaits before things wrap up on Saturday afternoon. Some already giving it the ultimate tick of approval. Agfest is the really best day ever. So much fun. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News. A new anti-smoking campaign is encouraging people to listen to their bodies before it's too late. Tasmania has a second highest smoking rate in Australia and experts are concerned it's only going to worsen with vapours three times as likely to take up tobacco use. It's a deathly habit claiming more than 500 lives in Tasmania each year. The new Sounds Like It's Time to Quit campaign is designed to intervene with around 70,000 smokers before they become just another statistic. <coughs> Listen to your body. Is it telling you it's time to quit? Quit Tasmania and the Cancer Council, educating viewers about the early health impacts of smoking and vaping, using familiar sounds to hit home. <sighs> Dad, we can stop if you want. We're talking about that persistent kind of chronic cough, sometimes known as smoker's cough, 
the breathlessness and wheezing and things like gum disease that can really impact people's quality of life. It's hoped their powerful messaging will see more smokers turning the leaf before their warning signs go beyond repair. Even if they're not ready to, to quit yet or um, have a few questions around smoking or quitting vaping, um, to please call us at the quit line. The campaign was developed in Western Australia and has already seen 79% of viewers motivated to quit. Experts crossing their fingers for an even greater response in Tasmania, rolling the ads out across TV, radio and social media platforms over the next eight weeks. Sometimes all it takes is something on TV or a bit of reading material that can really trigger somebody to make that positive change. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. There are fresh fears from the local beekeeping industry after a second small hive beetle was detected in East Devonport. The latest discovery is about a kilometre away from the initial find in early March. Labor is now calling on the state government to step up and provide vital funding. Although we've got incredible teams of people working in biosecurity Tasmania, the understaffing and the under-resourcing is putting pressure on these teams so they're not able to adequately respond. A 10 kilometre bee movement restriction zone remains in place until further notice. Heading into winter, Tasmanians are again being encouraged to get vaccinated against both the flu and COVID. State Health Commander Catherine Morgan-Wicks rolled up her sleeves for the jab, saying it's the best form of protection against respiratory illnesses. Prepare, plan and protect. Protect yourselves and your families this winter. Parents are being urged to get young children vaccinated. It's a fairly unique experience of the last few years that influenza hasn't circulated in the community. And because of that lack of uh, previous exposure to influenza, the risk is probably greater this year. Over 18s can get the COVID vaccine for free at pharmacies and GPs with flu immunisation also available. TSL coaches say the competition could provide a crucial pathway for Tasmania's AFL team. A review into its future has been completed, but its release was delayed whilst the 19th licence was being negotiated. Lauderdale and Kingbridge coaches both believe a statewide competition is the best option. It get, gives people a chance to keep their dream alive if there's a state league model and then a, be able to step up into that VFL side. You need to have an aspirational competition or, or a higher level, um, which is the best in the state. The undefeated Tigers face their toughest test so far this season, taking on Launceston in a grand final rematch. But they've talked down the need to get revenge. They were better than us on the last day, but um, those sorts of things don't drive us or come into a factor when we're doing our preparations. The first bounce is at 2pm at Windsor Park on Saturday. Meanwhile, Taron Thomas is expected to play in the VFL this weekend. He could be just weeks away from returning to the AFL program. Ben McDermott has quit the Tigers and will return to Queensland for the next three Sheffield Shield seasons. While Jackson Bird has also flown the coop. He signed a two-year deal with New South Wales, ending an 11-year tenure in Tasmania. Born in Sydney, Bird moved to Hobart on his first state contract and was part of three Shield finals. The Tigers described him as arguably the greatest modern-day bowler in Shield cricket. The only homegrown winner of the Launceston 10 has returned to his roots, giving students at his old primary school a leg up. James Hansen offered some advice to youngsters warming up for the long distance race. The gun of the run, James Hansen, had some fierce competition around Riverside Primary. These students were keen to keep up with their school's athletic alumni. Tomorrow I'm going to run in the uh, state athletics. Um, I'm feeling a bit nervous and excited at the same time. Nothing like the reigning Launceston 10 champion to give a few pro tips. I used to get super nervous when I was younger going to these primary school carnivals and there's a lot of pressure but just to enjoy the, the moment and just to try their best. Hanson returned to the school eager to inspire the next generation. After all, it's where he unearthed his passion for running. It was a school that was really important in my development and putting dreams in me as a kid. As the only Launceston local to win his home 10 kilometre race, Hanson will try to back it up on June 11 when he lines up for take two. It was the best, best feeling I've ever had under a race because you can't get anything better than winning in front of your home crowd. But he'll have to get past some of his young protégés first. I'm going to be doing the 10k with my mum because she loves running like me.
Sometimes it's just in your blood. And after setting out to walk 300 kilometres to raise money for disadvantaged children, boxing coach Graham George has ended up walking 1,000. He clocked up around 20 k's a day on the treadmill, reaching the milestone in 50 days. Very, very tired all the way through it, but um, you know, especially the four o'clock in the morning is getting up and starting and uh, spending four or five hours a day on the treadmill. Danny Gill's former coach put the money raised towards the Scripture Union. And he's certainly deserved to put his feet up now, Kim. Yeah, what a great effort. Well done, Graham. Good evening. Hobart and Burnie, 16 degrees today. Launceston and Flinders Island, our high of 17. Devonport, a top of 15. And after a cold start, it was generally fine today. King Island, Smith and Lowhead and Bushy Park, 16 degrees. St Helens, Friendly Beaches, Grove and Strawn, 15. Lyawini, our low with minus one. And perfect sunny weather for Agfest today. Clear skies right across the state. There was a bit of heavy cloud build-up over the west this afternoon. A frontal cloud band is approaching Tasmania but most of the country fine and clear today. Tomorrow the cold front approaches and crosses the state tomorrow, the large high dominating most of the mainland. Northwesterly winds reaching 20 to 30 knots before turning southwesterly later in the day. Lighter winds inland but not by much. We do have a strong wind warning that's been issued for waters from southeast Cape all the way around to Wineglass Bay. Now for Hobart tomorrow, a little bit warmer, but a couple of showers moving in, 18 degrees, 17 for Huonville, 18 for Campania. Launceston, a top of 15 degrees with rain on the way, 16 for Devonport, rain for Georgetown, 16 the maximum. Burnie, similar forecast, 15 the top, strong the same, 15, 16 for Wynyard with rain. St Helens tomorrow, 16 with showers increasing, Swansea 17, showers 2 for Port Arthur creeping in there, 18 degrees. On Saturday, the north fine but partly cloudy as a few showers fall elsewhere across the state. Sunday, a similar pattern as showers continue but easing during the day. Snow to 400 metres as temperatures struggle. And on Monday, showers over the west, south and Bass Strait. Partly cloudy in Perth, rain for Adelaide and Melbourne, 18 the maximum. Sunny and 22 in Sydney, fine and partly cloudy for Brisbane. Partly cloudy in Hobart, it's 9. Clear in Launceston, 9 degrees as well. A few scattered showers over the northwest. Devonport, 14. And Kim, after your suggestion to the Premier last night, he has come out today and given the Tasmanian Turbo Chooks a bad rap as our AFL team name. But that hasn't stopped the people of Tasmania getting behind the Turbo Chooks. You know they're only found in Tasmania and they can't fly, but I'm telling you they can run the pants off just about everything. Top speed of 50 k's an hour and the campaign is now in full swing. Here's a bit of a look at the logo. Go the Turbo Chooks! Oh, go the Turbo Chooks and the people have spoken. That is all your news for now. We'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us this evening. Good night, everyone.